Hi there, welcome to the Raising Cinephiles podcast, a show about passing on your love of cinema to the next generation. I'm your host, Jessica Cantor, and I have worked in all facets of the entertainment industry for the last 20 years, and recently became a mom. In today's episode, we speak with Shannon Lee, who discusses how she fell in love with films and was introduced to them by being on her father, Bruce Lee's film sets, and how she passes on her love of films to her daughter. Always remember that myself and guests are speaking from personal experience, not giving parenting advice. Let's go ahead and dive into the episode. Welcome back to the Raising Cinephiles podcast. This is Jessica Cantor, your host. And today I'm here with Shannon Lee, the CEO of Bruce Lee Enterprises and diary chairperson of Bruce Lee Foundation and executive producer of Warrior and author of the incredible book, Be Water, My Friends, The Teaching of Bruce Lee. And I am so honored to call Shannon a friend on this journey of life and many other journeys. And I'm so excited to have you. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks for that lovely introduction. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. I will start with my first question. What is your very first movie memory? So my very first movie memory is probably a little unique because my father was Bruce Lee. So I was on film sets as a small child. And my first movie memory is of being on the film set of Game of Death. My father was filming at Golden Harvest Studios in Hong Kong. And so that's probably not exactly the type of movie memory you're looking for. I just have this memory of my father's films from almost before the time of cognitive memory. If you said to me, when was the time that you sat down and saw Enter the Dragon for the first time? I'm not sure I could tell you that, but I just have always known the film. I've always known it, like, and I've seen it a million times. And I would say my first movie memory of visiting a film set was Game of Death. And my first, like, really long form movie memory is probably Enter the Dragon. Did you watch that with your father? Do you have a memory of that? Probably not, because my father died before the film came out. Oh, yeah. I should know that. That's all right. He died about one month before the film released. So he got to see it in its entirety and he was very happy with the movie, but then he passed. And And how old were you? I was four when he died. Yeah. Yeah. But I have to tell you, I'm here to say for those parents in the listening room of which I am one. Do you always hear this? Those years are so important and they're so such an impressionable time and all of that. And I'm here to tell you that it's a hundred percent true because even though my sort of long form cognitive memory, all of our long form cognitive memory for the most part doesn't form until a little bit later, right? The feelings that I hold inside my body come from that time and they are the strongest anchors and parts of my makeup to this day. Interesting. A lot of these conversations are about when to start showing films and when is too soon? How soon can it be? How do we make this productive and how do they help shape your life? And in your unique situation, your father passed when you were young, but you were able to visit him through what he gave on screen. And do you know if your mom made it like a regular thing to watch his film? It's an interesting question because I just know that I've always known the movies, all of the movies. And so we must have been watching them. And I think that an interesting thing about my father's films is that they're typically rated R, right? They're quite violent, although they're not as violent as more as rated R movies today. (laughs) But I think it's with this question of when to show and all of that. For me, it was very natural to see the movies. I know it's a little different because it's my father. I grew up around martial arts. There was always martial arts happening around me in our household and all of that. So that was not foreign to me. But I have this experience with my daughter too, which that anything that's presented with plenty of conversation and ease around it at an early age, that kids tend to just go with the vibe of what's happening. And of course, if 
they find it scary or they don't like it, then you turn it off, right? But for me, seeing action films from a very early age was very natural. And I've grown up to be an action film lover because of it. Oh, it's an amazing thing. Totally different circumstance, but my son is the child of a donor and I show him his picture and pictures of his half siblings through Mm -hmm. screens and he has a reaction to them because I want to have that honesty in our relationship. And so he knows where he came from a very young age. He's 16 months. And some of the other donor siblings do the same. And I think it's probably that feeling of connection, seeing you like what's your parent when you see them. And so that also, I'm sure, was an interesting experience growing up, seeing someone that you didn't get to know through your childhood, but yet still had a relationship with. Yeah, completely. And in a lot of ways, it was very comforting for me to see Enter the Dragon in particular, because it's the one film in which my father is speaking in his own voice in English. And so it was very comforting for me to get to hear his voice and to see him and to see him smile and to see him kick ass. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And do you have memories of of watching the films with your brother? Gosh, I know that we would watch them in our TV room, family room, where we grew up. Sometimes I remember very clearly in 1978-ish, I want to say, going to the premiere of Game of Death because that film was not completed during my father's lifetime. And so they completed it several years later and there was a big premiere. And I remember it very clearly because my mom, my brother and I went, it was the first time I got to ride in a limo. So I was so excited about that. <laughs> and it was a big premiere. And so I know we all went to go see that film together, which the best part of that movie is the portions my father filmed. The rest is not so great. <laughs> But they did the best they could do in the 1970s, I suppose. So I know we did watch the movies as a family occasionally. Yes. And what was your relationship to non-Bruce Lee films? Yeah, I have to say, I think because of this, I had a love of film. My brother had a love of film. My brother wanted to be an actor from the time he could walk and talk. My father's love was martial arts, and he brought his martial arts to filmmaking. My brother's love was acting. And that is what he wanted to do more than martial arts. I forgot another title during my intro, which is you are and were and continue to be an actress. So (laughs) not that you have much time to pursue it amongst the brand building and continuing to help make new memories for new generations of your father and his legacy. So knowing that your brother was super excited to be part of the movie industry, did he introduce you to films? And as a cinema lover, what helped shape that for you? Yeah, we loved going to the movies. We loved watching movies at home too. But back in our day, if you wanted to see a movie, you went to the movie theater to see it (laughs) first. And we loved doing that. We were the generation that stood in line to see Star Wars in the movie theater, that saw Jaws in the movie theater. And aside from being around the movie business, which we were as kids, I think it was not so much that because once my father passed, we lived fairly normal lives. We were not connected to Hollywood much at all. Like, We knew Chuck Norris and we went to the premiere of the Octagon. But other than that, we didn't really spend any time in Hollywood growing up. But we had parents who were really creative, who were really adventurous and full of life and who loved entertainment, entertaining, being entertained. And so I think that Both of us, my brother and I, really loved the creative act, right? Look, my father's whole legacy is built on this idea of honestly expressing yourself, right? And the arts is one way in which we express ourselves. How we live our lives is another way. But we were very much engaged and in tune with storytelling, with the arts in general. And so I think it's it was natural for both of us to want to get into creative avenues, And the movies were and are such a magical, it's just just an entirely magical environment in which to immerse yourself. Now, and outside of 
your father's films. What are some of the other films that helped shape your love of cinema? Yeah, we tended as young people to love action and fantasy. And so I remember very clearly, like, going to see those movies, going to see Close Encounters of the Third Kind, going to see E.T., going to see any and many of the more action, fantasy, and stuff. Of course, I love all genres of movies. I love drama. I love romantic comedies. It can be really fun. I love comedy in general. But I think I would have to say that as kids, our main avenue uh, (laughs) in the beginning was action and fantasy films. Although I do remember very, very well begging my mom to let us go see Saturday Night Fever, which was very rated R and not appropriate for me at the age I was at. (laughs) But I got to see it eventually. (laughs) Yeah. And did you have any rituals in your family about films? We Definitely went to the movies a lot. We also would go to the drive-in. We actually have a very funny story. When my dad died, the car that we had was a two-door Mercedes. It was like a 350 SL. It was just a two-seater and it had this little tiny bench behind the two seats for packages, really. But we would go to the drive-in in this car. We would gather up our popcorn and our snacks. And sometimes I think we might even bring our dog and all smash into this tiny little car. <laughs> and go to the drive-in and it was a comedy of errors with just like popcorn everywhere and that kind of thing but we would go to the drive-in we would go as a family often to the movies but it became a bit of an inside joke because as the mothers that we are now we all know how tired moms are (laughs) it was a ritual where we would go to the movies we'd get our popcorn we'd get our drinks our candy and all that we'd sit down the lights would dim and my mom would just fall asleep (laughs) <laughs> yeah my mom told me she used to take us to the movies so she could nap that was like her nap time exactly and so we would be eating it up watching the movie and my mom would just be like <laughs> <"Out cold." laughs> yeah, which will probably be me not too long <laughs> though i love movies too much to fall asleep unfortunately yeah me too yeah that's amazing. A question I ask people, which you've answered, but I want to know if it's it's probably tricky and sticky to know who you are outside of the Bruce Lee identity. And mm-hmm. so I wanted to know how you developed your taste, like Saturday Night Fever against the backdrop of kind of what you're exposed to. When mm-hmm. did you start to get a handle on the things that only Shannon liked? Ooh. Yeah, that's an interesting question. I am definitely at my core a bit of a romantic a good, like in my teens, I loved all the John Waters movies. They were funny. They were romantic. So I definitely loved all of, uh, did I say John Waters? John Waters? Mm -hmm. Like 16 Candles and- Oh, John Hughes. John Hughes. I'm like, not John Waters, (laughs) John Hughes. (laughs) I also like John Waters, but very different reasons. (laughs) Waters, not some of them are, you know, Crybaby is romantic. Crybaby. (laughs) I also really loved musicals, which I can't say that my brother necessarily loved as much as me. One of my very first films that I really remember loving and watching over and over again was Singing in the Rain with Gene Kelly. And I had such a crush on Gene Kelly when I was like 10. You know, I sing also, so I guess that makes sense. I have a degree in music and vocal performance and I have sung and I've been in musicals. So I definitely had a love of musicals. And my mom used to take us to see plays and musicals often. So in addition to film, she would do that. I have also a real love for movies that because I love philosophy, which I may have gotten from my father, but is also very inherent to me as a human being. I love any films that kind of deal with the human condition or try to say something about something metaphysical about the human condition, right? Love the movie Interstellar. I just recently, this isn't a film, it's TV, but I just recently watched 
beef. And I just really loved where that went. I loved everything everywhere all at once, which of course many people do, but things that kind of are a little outside the box, a little metaphysical, but mm. really talk to the bigger themes of like loving one another and connecting and how to be a better human being and all that kind of stuff. I really love, especially if it's dressed up in great fantasy or something like that. Yeah, the philosophical is really innate to who you are. So it must be genetic. (laughs) For sure. So I'm going to transition a little into your daughter and curious if you remember the first film you showed her. Gosh, do I remember the first film that I showed her? I, as a parent, because I love film, really wanted her to also love film. Also because I really wanted to be able to take her to the movie theater, Mm -hmm. which is a hard thing to do for little kids because the movie theater, especially, and I'm sure many people have already mentioned this, but I'll put it out there again. The trailers in a movie theater are very assaulting for little kids because of the way trailers are cut Mm -hmm. to be very loud and fast paced and choppy and bombard you with all of the, these hyped up bits of a film that was always the harder part in taking Ren to the movie theater when she was little and I probably took her to her first movie when she was around four or five and she did not like the trailers they were scary to her so sometimes we would hold back and wait and then go in when the movie was once the movie was starting it was fine because it's more of an organic story Mm -hmm. and you get a chance to get into it as opposed to just being like Mm -hmm. with all the loudest bits trying to think what did I take her I as a parent was I sat through a lot of kids movies as parents do (laughs) And I loved it because it was something to go and do as an outing together. I also love movies. So I was excited. A lot of times it's not the, they weren't the best movies that you were seeing, but we also would watch movies at home. We had a whole collection of DVDs. Of course, now you can stream everything, but back then you had DVDs. And I would say that the big love that grew up for Ren was the Miyazaki movies. Mm Mm-hmm. She really loved all of the Miyazaki movies. Princess Mononoke was a little intense for her when she was little, so not that one so much. But, and this is my recommendation to you, is one of the movies that Ren would watch on replay over and over again, especially if she wasn't feeling great or she just wanted to be calm, was My Neighbor Totoro. Mm -hmm. And that was... A huge favorite of hers and I highly recommend for kids. Yeah, I'll definitely look that. I haven't seen it. So either of those. So I will have to see them. Oh, My Neighbor Totoro is such a sweet movie. And we have a Totoro Christmas ornament. Once you get into the world of Totoro and Miyazaki, <laughs> it's quite a world. But I'm trying to think. I don't know if I remember the very first movie that I took her to, but she has also a love of films because of it. And did you have any rituals in how you would watch movies together? We definitely got popcorn and we like to sit two thirds up middle if we can. We went through a phase for a while for fun as a big outing when we would go to some of those luxury theaters that where you could actually like order food Mm -hmm. and sit in the recliner chair So every now and again, we do something like that as a fun outing Mm -hmm. or outing for us. And how did you decide what was appropriate for her to watch? I think that a little bit of trial and error as always, and also just knowing your child really well, right? Is your child, do they not like loud noises? Do they not like flashing lights? Do they not like that kind of thing. So then you have to kind of think about what the films are. I know a lot of parents who would watch movies before they would let their Mm -hmm. kids watch the movies. I didn't really so much do that. If there were a couple of times when we were at a theater and Ren did not like the movie and wanted to leave and we would leave. If we put something on at home that she didn't like and found it scary or just didn't like it, we would just take it off. But I think for her, get to know your kid, the kind of sense of humor that they have, the things they find funny. Do they love animals? Do they love trains? Do they love... And Ren loves herself some musicals also. 
<laughs> it must have been fun <laughs> for you. Did you have any specific movies like on a list you were excited to show her? I recently, or during the pandemic, I guess I would say, I had her sit and watch The Shawshank Redemption. I must say she's 20 years old now, so she wasn't five. <laughs> <laughs> watching the Shawshank Redemption. But it's such a movie that I have loved. And so I wanted her to see it. And she really enjoyed it. When she was little, I mean, Singing in the Rain, I showed her Singing in the Rain. And that was a movie that she also really loved when she was little. It's a musical. It's beautiful. It's got great dance numbers. So that probably started her and her love of musical. Yeah, the Spielberg films and Singing in the Rain and Annie have been a very consistent theme. And then everyone has their own unique artsiness of tastes in between those standards. <laughs> yeah, no, I remember being excited when she would want to see a movie that I remember loving, like E.T. or something like that. Yeah. How did she discover older films? So I have to credit, I would sometimes show her older films like Singing in the Rain. I also have to credit her father, who's a big cinephile and loves movies also, and love to show her older films he'd want her to see, depending on the age, right? Oh, you should see an original James Bond movie, or oh, you should see... He showed her all of the original old Bugs Bunny cartoons. One of the things she used to watch, I don't know if you remember this, but like Warner Brothers or somebody used to put out or MGM would put out these That's Entertainment, like the Golden Age of Hollywood movie that was like a review of all of the Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers and all of that. And he would show her those and she would sit and watch those and love them. Esther Williams and all of that kind of stuff. Was there anything as she became a tween or teenager that she would want to see that you wanted her to wait? That is a good question. She was never, Ren does not like horror movies, really. She was not excited or interested to watch horror movies and was easily scared. <laughs> so she didn't really want to see them. But I remember as you get to an age where you all your friends are watching horror movies. And so you want to watch your first horror movie. But I think she was quite a bit older, actually, I want to say she was probably like 15 or 14 when she watched her first horror movie, which, you know, I guess it's a rite of passage. <laughs> Although the parents end up with up all night again, you thought you were done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think if there were any movies I was really like, oh no. Oh, I have a funny story. In my mind, the film Grease was this beloved childhood movie musical for me. Mm -hmm. And I remember showing it to her when she was quite young and not remembering all the adult content that is in that movie. <laughs> and I remember when I can't remember the character's name is Pinky, I think is singing to, you know, about the beauty school dropout. Mm -hmm. And he says to her, unless she was a hooker and Ren turns to me and says, what's a hooker? <laughs> it's like, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> and also I have to say as a woman, like the message of that movie is not really great. Yeah. But I didn't. It was one of those things where I showed it to her. She was probably way too young to see it. And I didn't realize until after we were already watching it that it was inappropriate. But it led to some very good conversations, which is, I think, the thing that I always lean on is one of my big things that I'm always trying to do is make sure there's plenty of communication and conversation around something. Yeah. Not trying to stop anything from happening. I'm just trying to have conversation around what has happened. And you know what, that's definitely a theme that's coming up in the podcast is sometimes it's okay and even great when you have to have those conversations because they're happening in a constructive way when it's not an emergency or it's not heightened emotions or desires, but rather like, oh, okay, I understand. And that's the consequences. And it's that kind of toddler brain doesn't come back, <laughs> <laughs> which I hear comes back to teenagers. Yes. The teenage years and the toddler years are very similar in a lot of ways. That's what I've been hearing and I'm getting into my toddler years right now. And just curious if what showing... Ren, your father's films, was that something that happened early? Was it nonchalant or very serious? Like, what was that moment like? 
So interestingly enough, Ren didn't watch her first Bruce Lee movie until she was, I'm trying to think how old she was, probably 12 or 13. And in part, she had seen lots of clips, right? Mm -hmm. Because the clips are all around. It's part of what I do for work. The clips are on social media, all that kind of stuff. So she knew who Bruce Lee was. Obviously, it's her gong gong. And she had seen some little clips, but she'd never watched a movie all the way through. And in part, I just didn't want to force it. She's also not seen a lot of Brandon's movies. So it was more like when you're ready and you have a real interest to watch the movies, then but then let's do it. But we happened to be on a trip in Rome, Italy. And so we had our tickets to go to the Colosseum. And one of my father's films is filmed there, Way of the Dragon. So the night before we were going to go, I said, we're going to put on Way of the Dragon and watch it so that when you go to the Coliseum, you have this touch point. And so it was really fun. We sat in the hotel room the night before we watched Way of the Dragon. And then we went to the Coliseum and we were with my cousin, Sydney, who is super blonde and Ren has dark hair. And so I had the two of them pretend they were Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris. (laughs) I took pictures of them. (laughs) Yeah. And they definitely believe places hold history and so that's so like powerful to have the touch point of oh i am exactly where my lineage was in this moment and understanding the power of that is pretty awesome yeah so i think it's interesting because i think she has every desire to see the movies i just think sometimes it's hard to make the time to go back and sit and make that space this year 2023 is actually the 50th anniversary of Enter the Dragon. And I know that there are going to be a number of screenings and things happening. So my guess is she'll get to see that movie all the way through from beginning to end this year, which will be really great. And on a big screen. On a big screen. Yeah. Maybe if there's an outdoor screening that my kid can run around at, I would bring him. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Because my brother, as you've seen the photos, has already dressed him up. In the yellow (laughs) jumpsuit. (laughs) He has it. So cute. (laughs) That was how I was introduced to the world of martial arts. And in some ways, classic cinema. Because my brother was so into Bruce Lee that I had never watched, quote unquote, older movies until he brought those into the house. Yeah. I think it's a real treat to take the time to go back and watch older movies. Mm -hmm. I had never seen Casablanca and I took the time to go back and sit and really watch it. And yes, this is a few years ago now, but, and it was, it's just such an interesting window into our world, not just the story that's being told, but the way it's being told. Yeah. I love the opportunity to see older films on the big screen. I find, even if it's just like, my the biggest TV in my house, not the computer or whatever. But if I can watch them in cinema, I like to because for some reason it just transcends differently. Like the distraction of everyday life can go away because the pacing of them seems are very different than what my brain is currently wired to. Yeah, totally. And that's an interesting one. We did show Ren all together when she was a teenager, The Shining. <laughs> She's a teenager. Yes. And the interesting thing is that that movie is very slow paced. It's very eerie. It builds really slowly as he's losing his mind and they're settling into the hotel and all that. And in the beginning, she was like, this movie is boring. (laughs) But then as it got going, she was like, ooh, it's super creepy. And now she loves that she's seen it. Yeah. It took me a long time to get past the twins in the hallway. Yeah. Like I would make it there and then this would no. And <laughs> th- those are the kinds of like, gore and whatnot. Jump scares aren't as scary for me. It's like seeing things. Those are the things that like when I wake up at night, even or there's like the jokes when you turn off the light and you have to run as fast as you can to your room and to your bed. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> that's kind of me I put my son down and then I turn off all the lights in the house and I'm like okay up to my bed <laughs> yeah and we watched that with her with one of her friends too and again they were like 15 so it wasn't 16 it wasn't like 
showing the shining to a five year old. But no. <laughs> yeah, and it's yeah, again, I you can I'm already starting to tell Miles get scared and he'll hold on to me, but mm-hmm. he'll want more. Yeah. And so it's a big feeling for him, but then he I, like he leans into it. He doesn't shy away, which I love. Like when he's scared of something, I'm a big proponent of if it's not dangerous, we should investigate it. Yeah, I think that's great because it it helps kids to learn that they can navigate their emotions a little bit, and that sometimes the fear of what it is more scary than what it actually is in as it plays out. Yeah. And sometimes it's a loud noise that's scary, but the thing itself isn't scary, which I have to say, nobody has brought up the trailers in the cinema yet. And so mm-hmm. that was a really good tip because if I'm taking, I do think if I like the first movie, I'm going to show Miles in a theater, like maybe his fourth birthday and I'll rent a theater and bring his friends and I'll be more in control of what's on screen. Yeah, But I might not be able to wait that long. <laughs> Yeah, the trailers was a big thing because, you know, the trailers, first of all, they go on for a while. Sometimes, even though it's a kid's film, there are a few trailers that are a little spooky or a little something, and she did not like them. But the thing that's really interesting, because it makes so much sense, but when I was growing up, and I'm pretty sure when you were growing up, that was the only way you knew what was coming out. Yeah. And so I would go and make sure we got there to see the trailers because that was just part. Of course, I wasn't five, but I, you know, I loved them. To this day, I love the trailers. I want to see the trailers in the theater. And I know you can watch them other places, but you don't know what trailers they're going to show mm-hmm. ahead of every movie. So I love to see them on the big screen. And also, I went through phases where we would sometimes spend all day at the movies we would go, my husband and I, not with Ren, but we would go and buy a ticket for a 10 a.m. movie. And then we would get lunch and then go see a 2 p.m. movie. And then we would, you know, sometimes see two or three movies in a day. And it was really fun. That's what I love film festivals. Mm -hmm. I would get tickets and we would schedule our whole day around movie watching and from documentaries to like edgy dramas to all new and the filmmakers are there to talk about the craft and it's such a beautiful experience for cinema lovers. Yeah, definitely. Oh, I'm going to, I know you've answered it, but I'm going to ask it point blank again. What film should, maybe not first film, but how about what film should I show Miles so he becomes a cinephile any age? Any age. Whew. Oh, that's a good question. I already said My Neighbor Totoro, which you could show right away. Because it's for, he's 16 months old, so he might not (laughs) appreciate it at this moment. But it's for little kids. And there's a moment where it seems like it's going to, it's maybe a little scary, but it ends up not being. So I'll just give you that little spoiler alert, confidence booster to know that it all works out. Okay. Gosh, what film should you show? Miles. Trying to think about the films I've shown Ren purposefully, which were things like Singing in the Rain, which were some of the classic iconic action films too. Look, we're an action family. What Mm -hmm. can I say? Like the original Terminator movie or the original, obviously when she was older. She loves comedies too. I think like a really amazing comedy. I think maybe picking a seminal film from a variety of genres. Yeah. Making sure that there's exposure to all the different genres and then getting to see what does your child really love? Right? Yeah. Yeah. I loved showing her. I think you already are doing this, but the Spielberg movies are such great movies in general, most of them. Jaws is probably a little dicey, although it's probably not as scary to kids today as it was to us. Yeah, first. he's definitely up there as one of the first films, especially since the main character is a young boy that he can yeah. really identify with. I remember a movie that I loved. I don't know if I've shown it to Ren that I really loved was Stand By Me. <gasps> I love that movie. Yeah. I should try to show her that, especially so that she could get to see River Phoenix, who was just such a talented, beautiful actor. Yeah, I have memories of that movie that just, that's the one with the big puking scene, right? The pie contest. Is that Stand By Me? 
Stand by me is the kids who are like on an adventure. They find a dead body on the by the train tracks, yeah. and they're yeah. on like that adventure. And one of them is like a little more heavy set. Uh huh. And I think it's like a dream sequence almost, where he's in a p- all you can eat pie contest, and he starts puking, uh-huh. and then everyone starts puking. <laughs> oh, I like have this vivid memory of that. But it's just like the the friendship between these boys and the challenges, and it's very much like Goonies is first, Stand by Me is when he's a little, like a little bit older. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shannon, thank you so much for being on my podcast. I knew you liked movies, but we've never really had a chit chat about cinema before. I know. Oh, it was really great to get to have this chat and thank you for having me on. And it was such a pleasure. Thank you so much. I think it's really beautiful what you're doing, trying to shape this love of movies for your child because it's a beautiful art form and I know the film industry is changing so much as the way we take in entertainment changes and all of that but there's really nothing like going to the theater yeah Yeah. speaking of which we need a movie date for sure (laughs) (laughs) I know we should do that actually we have book clubs we should have film clubs I think we should start it for sure Mm -hmm. let's start a movie club Yeah. A cinema (laughs) movie club. (laughs) If you enjoyed the conversation, please don't forget to like and subscribe. New episodes release every Wednesday. And leave a comment and let me know which movie you think I should show my son. Until next time, take care.